Hello and welcome back to another episode of Love and Life. Yay, I made it this time. Woo! Aaron's back. <laughs> yes, so we return to you yet again with our next episode. Um, wow, okay, how to jump into this. <laughs> I forgot how we did it before. We had something. Um, we did. We, it was something cheesy, I bet. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, we're back with the new version now. But I uh, just wanted to open up this episode saying uh, thank you so much to everyone who listened to last week's episode, uh, all the feedback and comments that we received, and uh, the shout outs from Eddie too were very encouraging and uh, really motivating so that, you know, we have some that drive to continue sharing uh, our story and our journey with you all. Uh, I really feel that the community aspect of this podcast is what makes it so worthwhile is it's not just us uh, talking just for the sake of it, but we really hope that this is a platform through which many people can be inspired and feel moved in their hearts in various ways. Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Last week, I mentioned that I wanted to get Aaron to jump in and share his side of the story. So, Aaron, go ahead, fill us in on maybe just some of the highlights from the past year when we were on our lengthy hiatus. Oh, goodness. A whole year. <laughs> okay. A lot happened. Um, well, first off, um, the, we had our move into the apartment that we're in now. That was pretty, um, huge. Right now it's July and we were getting ready to move right around this time. We were looking at, um, different apartment complexes, trying to find the, the right place, the, the place where the will was. Um, uh, we didn't just want to find, uh, just anywhere that and just kind of make it work, but we knew that. Um, if we followed the Holy Spirit's inspiration, that we could uh, find the best place for us. Um, and this actually ended up becoming the best place for us, which we stay here quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but that process, I mean, I don't know how many of you have gone through the process of searching for an apartment while you're alone, just by yourself. It's a whole other thing when you're working with someone else and they're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so... That was quite a trip because there's a limit to how much energy um, I had, a limit to how much energy Chelsea had, Um, and it was hot too, and you were going through a lot. You had like uh, that morning sickness phase too, which was rough. Um, Yeah, you did not have a pleasant experience. Actually, the morning that we came here, you had a, that was a very rough car ride. I don't know if you remember. (laughs) I really, I think my brain has blocked out some of the not so great memories. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'll spare details. You know, just keep it nice, keep it clean. <laughs> but yeah, it was a, uh, it was a very physically draining <laughs> car ride for her. Mm. Um, and so that was quite a, a challenge. But you know, we continuously um, kept up the search and considered a lot of different options and, and aspects as well, um, and ultimately settled on where we are. Mm-hmm. Um, then that move-in process was pretty crazy. Um, we had Chelsea's whole family pretty much help us, and you know members from Athens Church and um, friends come and help. And it, it was a lot of people and a lot of moving in one night. Uh, <laughs> and that same night, because I was actually uh, in the process of looking for a, a new job, um i actually had an interview so i got off of work oh that's right yeah, uh, i got off work <laughs> i did i even come home first no i didn't i no. didn't i got off work and i went straight to my interview we like changed in their parking lot into my <laughs> suit like and i didn't want my employer at the time to know so i like didn't wear a suit to work obviously and so like, it was really awkward trying to get all that changed. Um, but I went in and had my interview. And then after my interview, I raced back to the house, changed my clothes again. And then like everyone was in the middle of packing. Like all the stuff was packed up. So I already had to have my change of clothes set aside. 
Um, and yeah, oh, that oh, was a yeah, long because we had to pick up the U-Haul. Yeah. Like the timeline was so tight, just picking you up from work, racing you to your interview, then me rushing over to pick up. I dropped you off the, the U-Haul first, I think. That's that, what it I took was. The car to the oh interview. my gosh, that was crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, but we did it. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Um, so, but yeah, we ended up finding his apartment. We got the moving done. That was a very long night. Chelsea pushed herself way too hard. Um, ladies, this is for you. If you are pregnant, even if you can't see a bump, even if it's just like a month or two or however long, please don't overexert yourself because she was going through a lot of pain. Her stomach was like aching. your sides were aching. Your stomach was aching. Yeah, like, like sharp pain, um, and it was quite concerning for me. I mean, I knew I knew she wanted to help and she wanted to get the move done quickly, and she could see how exhausted everyone was getting because there was so much furniture. But please don't overexert because that <laughs> you know is bad for you, and of course it's it's concerning too for your husband. Yeah, well, that's fair. That's fair. I got to give Aaron his his shout out because, yeah, I definitely feel strongly that I wanted to be involved and support. I felt really bad because I had asked, you know, my family to come out and it's heavy furniture that they were bringing like a dresser and bed, king size bed. Um, up three flights of stairs. There's no elevator in our apartment. So it was just something that everybody really jumped on board to support us, which I'm very thankful for. But I felt like, oh, you know, at the very least, like I could help move some boxes or at least unpack them. But as it turns out, I could not, in fact, do those things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Aaron really stepped up and was like you need to sit down and i was like okay <laughs> they brought the couch up sit down on the couch <laughs> basically yeah but we got everything moved thankfully it was quite a process but we're so thankful for everyone that helped and those of you who did help who are listening to this again thank you so much mm -hmm, uh, thank it, you it changed the world it was really so big for us um but yeah so we got all moved in and it was still pretty early on. Like we still hadn't had an, an ultrasound of Keo right at that time, did we? I don't think so. Also, is he awake? That's what I was thinking. I'm like, <laughs> is he up right now? I think he's crying in the other room. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds like, like him. him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let Aaron go. Yeah, check I'm gonna on go him. check on him. Give me a second. Let's see if I can pat him back to sleep. Yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna. I'm just going to go ahead and take over where he left off. Um, yeah. Um, but let me try to keep my train of thought here. Aaron is so good about making sure that he takes care of, you know, especially Keo's sleep needs, which is so much appreciated. Um, but really what I want to talk about as well in this episode and I feel like it might bounce back and forth just because I know when Aaron comes back in I want him to finish his part of the story um but while he's away this actually just is a nice segue into the second topic that I felt was precious um I wanted to kind of give a response to um Eddie Kwan, who has been doing the Tuesday morning episode of uh, Pastor Sky's MSD. So um, he gave us a very lovely and generous shout out uh, on this week's episode. And so um, just wanted to kind of give a, a response to that in terms of uh, he was mentioning a lot about uh, kind of hearing the perspective from this generation of blessed couples and blessed families um just as we reflect on what how things were for the first generation um you know he mentioned that there are things that are good and things that could be improved and so you know i felt very encouraged that 
you know, this platform can be a way for us to share the things that we ourselves have learned over the course of time um, and also open up, you know, uh, the table for discussion for everyone else who's kind of in our same situation. I want to take this moment to, you know, talk about Darren and Bree who are expecting their first also this month, which is super exciting. I'm just, you know, uh, Bree and I went through the blessing process together and she's been like such a solid support and friend and sister throughout all of this. I mean, like I texted her and called her all throughout pregnancy and, you know, now I am kind of on the other side of things. So like checking in on her to see how things are going as she gets closer and closer and really looking forward to sharing like this stage of life together as well. Just the, the newborn process. Um, so that was kind of the topic that I wanted to talk about is newborns because it's just such an all-consuming phase of time. And uh, what's the phrase that my mom was telling me? The, the days are long, but the years are short, something like that. Which, you know, basically every minute, and especially like when your baby is crying, it just feels like an eternity. Uh, fortunately, you know, Kia is a pretty restful baby. Um, but in those moments, like especially on long commutes, things can get a little stressful. But then it feels like I just blinked and already four months have just flown by and we're about to get him started on uh, basic like solid foods, purees and cereals and things like that. So like already I can kind of get the sense of this distortion of time, it almost feels like. And I think in our lives of faith too, it can be like this. Um, you know, as the newborn in faith, things just come together so fast. Like, especially when you're studying the lessons, you're realizing and it just feels like, wow, I'm just jumping into the deep end and everything clicks and makes sense. Holy Spirit is just working and pouring fire upon you. And, you know, over the course of time, I think that it really starts to um, come, come together in a steady pace. And the impact of what your newborn experience was like lasts you for a lifetime. And so I kind of equate this like spiritual life and physical life together, where as an educator, right, like I know the value of early childhood and how much the life that you live in your first, particularly the first six years are crucial to your psychological development, emotional development, of course, your physical as well. Um, and so in many ways, like it's so important, but even more deeply than that, right, as a blessed family, what we really have to keep in mind is that spiritual component. Um, you know, I can do all the ins and outs of your physical well-being and things that you should do with your child at this age and why this is important. But on the spiritual side of things, I think it's a lot less intuitive. Like, <laughs> you know, does your baby need to be observing the pre <laughs> And so, like, to that end, like, let's just talk real transparency and real honesty. Like, Aaron is super consistent and super faithful and diligent about pre dawn. Myself, I mean, just from a physical and, uh, I guess, I don't want to say emotional, but like, just mental perspective, 
because of all the changes that your body is going through, like as women during pregnancy and then like those early postpartum days, you're just white out. Like it's a different kind of exhaustion. To give you an example, like I remember literally falling asleep on the floor at my job in my first trimester. Like that, that was how tired I was. <laughs> and so, you know, pre eh, uh, yeah, it was not as solid as I wished it was. Um, we set a fierce prayer condition, you know, nightly before we went to sleep. But I think, you know, it, it really requires like another layer of effort. And I remember hearing in an education, I don't remember when or where, but really like the life of faith of the mother is so crucial to how the baby turns out. And, you know, I live, a, I believe a very reflective life and thinking about myself my strengths and my not strengths, my weaknesses. Um, and I have to say, like, this is an area that I'm really grateful to have a steady and unwavering spouse in because for me, it's really like, it's kind of an arduous journey just trying to maintain all of the things with the addition of, you know, you're not really in control at all of hormones and, you know, making sure that you're getting enough sleep at night and your baby's eating all throughout the night. And so you're up and you're down and then you have work the next day. So there's just, there's a lot to, to factor in. Um, and it's something that, you know, I really like put effort into applauding myself and like really pumping myself up to make pre dawn because, uh, frankly speaking, it's not it's not even close to every day. <laughs> so when I do, it's like, all right, we did it. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to know, you know, from other mothers in Providence, like kind of how that journey was for you, because, you know, I, I want to give my own perspective. I want to encourage others who may be going through the same thing or may have experienced the same thing that, you know, nonetheless, like our faith is still alive and still fiery and passionate, but, you know, there are definitely areas of struggle that we have for like, you know, pretty good reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Keo comes with us to Sunday service and I think that's really, um, a great condition. Now, granted, we have to follow like his sleep schedule because like a tired, overtired baby is nobody's <laughs> dream. But, you know, even just making the trip and meeting church members and things like that, like, to me, this was one of the conversations that we had during um, my pregnancy was what kind of atmosphere do we want Kyo to grow up in? What kind of environment do we want him to have? Who is he going to spend time with? Like, how is he going to have friends and believe that Providence really is the place where he wants to be? And I guess like this is really the heart of what I wanted to talk about um, is Gosh, like there's so much responsibility in like parenthood that we take on and I feel people experience it with varying degrees of success where some people like go all out and it can be like drowning the plant right? You over fertilize and over water it and it ends up that it can't like really plant its roots deeply. And then some are like on the other extreme of the pendulum where, you know, it's like, well, do what you want. Like it's your life and your choice. Or if the parent's life of faith really isn't that good, then it can uh, 
definitely impact their child's uh, upbringing and perspective of Providence. And it's something that like I really gave a lot of thought to because, you know, on the one hand, like I'm no, like I'm by no means perfect. Um, but I really, really strongly feel that something that is invaluable to me is raising children who value this history and value this word, value something. And it's my work to figure out what my role in that is. And I share this with Aaron quite a lot, but like my perspective of raising children is very much like partnership with the heavens. Like I have absolute faith and conviction and it's something that is so necessary especially when you start to get child care involved where I know that there are a lot of women um in the world at least I don't know about in Providence so much but lots of women have a, a lot of anxiety around leaving their child and like dropping their child off at school the first time is like <laughs> just the worst experience and moms cry and it's honestly like harder for them than it actually really is for the child. But it was something that I prayed about a lot was finding a place that was appropriate and that I felt really confident in so that Keo could have a good experience. But the other component of that is knowing that, you know, from birth, he's surrounded by a multitude of angels who are there to protect him and support him. And knowing that in life, like there's not a single person on this earth who has never gotten a bruise or a scratch or cried because their friend wasn't nice to them. Like all of these are universal experiences that all of us have gone through. And as a teacher, I think I have like such a strong advantage of being able to see children overcome those struggles and difficulties and so it really has lowered that like anxiety and concern as a mother because i've just worked with so many children and i know how strong and resilient they are and i'm gonna pause there because it sounds like aaron just got back and he is still up <laughs> speaking of strong and resilient children yes he is still awake but it is nap time so i did not pick him up out of the crib he can, yeah, what I've done in the past is uh, if he doesn't sleep by me patting him, then I'll give him like 15 minutes. If he cries for the whole 15 minutes, he does. If he stopped in the middle, then great. Um, and then I'll go back and I'll try again. And it's usually around the second time I go in there to try, it works. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, he woke up at school around 3.15, I want to say. So. Oh, yeah, it's definitely nap time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's tired, but that's babies for you. Um, I just kind of went on a spiel. Okay. <laughs> um, and I wanted to make sure that we got a chance to finish your your story as well. Okay. Uh, you, do you want me to, like, kind of connect it to what you were saying? Like, what were you talking about? What was I talking about? Oh, guys, <laughs> help. Um, I was talking about uh, life of faith mm -hmm. and kind of the newborn stage. Okay, for everybody who's listening to this, like you're hearing it for the second time, but I'm going to recap it really quickly for Aaron. So basically I was talking about um, how our lives of faith Gosh, it's so hard to describe. And now I feel like I'm on the spot. Oh, sorry. No, it's <laughs> not your fault. I just, my brain <laughs> just turned into mush. Oh my gosh, somebody in the comments is going to be like, it was this, 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 and this. I could always just play it back and listen to it. Um, the general gist is my dreams of raising Keo to have... A healthy life of faith and comparing the physical and spiritual like early childhood stages 
And so I know how important the first, like, especially six years of life are and connecting that to, you know, it's not only the physical that we have to think about as blessed families, but also the spiritual side of things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And so setting prayer conditions for that. And then I was just wrapping up talking about, you know, how, how much we have to entrust things to faith because the reality is like not everything is in our control and every child gets bumps and bruises and scrapes but Mm -hmm. we know that because our child is within like this time period in this domain that he has that hedge of protection spiritually Mm -hmm. as well okay well i mean i can i can connect to to that uh, aspect um it's i'm i wanted to kind of go in chronological order but really as i was patting keo the holy spirit inspired me on like what specifically i should talk about um so i'll kind of just connect that to what i'm about to say um and it's most specifically not regarding the leading up to keo being born but the time that he was actually the day that he was born or technically the day before um men when I tell you, <laughs> your wife will go through some things while she is birthing a child, and there is very little you can do about it, and that is a wake-up call. It was a wake-up call for me. And it connects to what you were saying because, you know, I mean, as men, we generally like to feel resourceful, you know, like to know that we are capable of doing things mm. um, and to be able to do those things well. Um, and that's certainly the case for me. And that, I mean, we, I, I'm sure you shared with them in the last episode, um, but we did, or the plan was to do a home birth. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was also very stressful <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, we did everything we could to set up in advance and got all the supplies and whatnot. But when it came down to like actually like experiencing the contractions and all of that, man, I have not heard. <laughs> screams of pain <laughs> like that <laughs> that was and i mean thankfully i mean i'll, I'll say this the the midwives was it the midwives yeah they warned me they're like so it's gonna be tough for you listening because you know especially if you're a husband that wants to always protect your your wife and make sure she doesn't experience any pain or discomfort it's gonna be really hard for you and i was like I mean, she can handle herself. Like, I don't <laughs> you really, did say that. I don't really feel like I need to protect her from experiencing pain. Like she's a pretty strong woman. And then I saw her experiencing pain, and I was like, "Dang, <laughs> I do kind of wish I could help alleviate some of that because that's a lot." So, <laughs> not to discourage any women from, you know, the thought of bearing children, but it was a very challenging day, and I will be honest. Um, and I don't think I, I don't think I told you this. It was like maybe an hour in to the home birth, and like just the powerlessness that I felt, not really knowing what I should be doing, how I should be doing it, where I should be doing it, and like like really comforting and like say, oh, it's okay, it's gonna be okay. That's not really my forte, <laughs> and that's really what she needed, and so that felt terrible. And then her sister ended up coming um, to do that. And I was like, then why am I here? Oh, <laughs> literally. And like, oh, it was terrible. I was literally over the home birth like oh. an hour in. And there were many more hours than that. Uh, so it was kind of rough. I'm not going to lie uh, from my perspective, just based on what I was going through, what I was processing. And that, that feeling of wanting to help and like be s- supportive, but not really clearly knowing how like we got talks from the midwives and from our like birthing coach i guess you could say victoria Mm -hmm. um we had talks and stuff like that from them um but nothing to really prepare me for what to do in that instant you know at each moment you know how to respond to different concerns and things like that and so it was it was very tough it was very tough for me um but i held on i didn't give up thankfully um and yeah so that I, I was going somewhere with this but it was basically it was a really tough time um 
and then we ended up transitioning to the hospital uh, and I was very thankful for that. Um, there's also something that we needed to at the time. Um, dang it. She walked out of the room to go check on Keo. And now my thought process is... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, I feel like we were, we were so hopeless. Um, but basically, um, it was a lot. It took a lot to bring Keo into this world. Um, and there was a lot going into that. Um, you know, and we, we navigated it, you know, each step of the way together. Um, but what I really wanted to share, since unfortunately that train of thought isn't coming back to me, um, I'll, I'll get to comments. So, you know, maybe in the comments, if someone says, you were talking about this, I can go back and, and message in there and finish what I was trying to say. But what I really wanted to say, what I really wanted to share is there are a lot of incredible blessings that, um, the Holy Trinity gave to us in the midst of all of that. You know, there was a very hard time. Pregnancy is not easy. It's not easy for the woman who is bearing the child. It's also not easy for the husband who's supporting her because all the things that she cannot do during that time, you know, you have to step up and do. And I mean, you can, of course, get family and friends to help out as well, but there are a lot of things that you kind of have to step up and do that before perhaps she was doing, like if it's regarding cooking or cleaning or organizing or, or working on projects or things like that, like if it's things that need to get done, generally a lot of that falls onto the husband because the wife is, you know, going through a lot of pain or is, is fatigued. Like Chelsea went through a lot of fatigue during really almost the entire pregnancy. It was a lot. A lot of times where she just didn't have energy to do anything. She actually stopped going to work and, and ultimately um, left the job. There, lot, there was a lot going on, so she ended up leaving the job that she was working and just literally staying at home. And she slept a majority of the day every day for like a few months. So it was it was hard for her, you know. And it's different for every person, of course, but you know, during that time, I had to do a lot, and I was also working two jobs, and working my normal job, which was very busy as a freight forwarder at the time, and then going and teaching English in the evenings at a, a language school, and that was a lot, too, and then coming home late, and then making dinner, and then taking care of all this stuff around the house, and then preparing for the next day, and it, it was, it was, a, it was a whole lot, and so it wasn't easy. Um, there was a lot of hardship during that time, but um, you know, we continuously set a prayer condition condition together um, and really did all that we could in order to set Keo up, not just physically, but spiritually for, you know, success coming into the world. Because, you know, a, a lot of that process of developing the child, of course, you can, you know, take prenatals and, and things like that. But a lot of it's kind of hands off, like we can't really control it. And so that's especially an area where it's so important to entrust that work to God. And so we prayed every night. I mean, we may have missed a night here or there in the process with like tiredness and busyness and things like that. But pretty consistently, we prayed for Keo. We prayed that he would be a healthy boy, that he would be strong, that um, he would be, um, you know, from the womb, from from birth, really um, set apart, you know, as a bride of, of heaven, you know, and we prayed a lot for uh, things he would experience in life and things of that sort, uh, and that really made a huge difference. <clears throat> a lot of people um, have seen Keo since he was born and been like, wow, he's so strong, or wow, he looks so healthy, or wow, he's, he's so beautiful, or so handsome, or whatnot, and I'm like, oh, thank you, All right? But we really do attribute a lot of that to, to prayer. Like, we, we tried to make sure Chelsea was eating well, and and sleeping well, and she wasn't stressed, that she always felt loved and um, felt at peace so that there was no adverse effects on, on Keo um, because of any stress or, or upsetness or anything like that. But, and, you know, we really do thank God more than anything for helping us through that whole process. It really, it's not something we could have just kind of made work out as well as it did. Um, and even the the day when you know Keo was she, when Chelsea went into labor and Keo was on his way, even that the whole string of events and everything you know me with that frustrated feeling you know and all of that aside, like the whole process it was it was really God you know from the very beginning um, you know the timing of it. Keo was born at pre dawn, which was awesome on uh, February twenty seventh. Uh, 2024, but 
you know, there's there is a lot that really God uh, orchestrated, and and a lot of people that He worked through and in inspiring us to do certain things so that um, you know all all of it could work out well in the end, and our little Kyo could could um, come into the world. And actually, Chelsea just walked back in; she had to step out to to check on him. But yeah, she is holding him, so you might hear him as we are doing the podcast. Yeah, I'm gonna hey. say hi to Kyo. Hey, big boy. <laughs> hey, big boy. You're going to say hi? We'll see if he does or not. He refused to go to sleep, so. Yeah. We'll just keep him here for a moment. He so. looks tired, though. <laughs> yeah, don't don't mind any baby sounds that you might hear. All right, I'm sure you shared a very deep and meaningful. <laughs> oh, I didn't get to the most important part. Oh, all right. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the, the huge blessings that God provided <clears throat> in the midst of all of those hardships um, so I, I had mentioned that the day we were moving, I was, I went to a job interview. Um, I actually didn't get that job. Um, and then I had other interviews as well, but I didn't get those jobs either. And I wanted to get a different job so we could have better income and, and whatnot. Um, but just wasn't working out. And, you know, ultimately I was kind of like you know, a bit over it. And then uh, over the course of time, yeah, I kept messaging recruiters and whatnot. Big boy. I kept messaging recruiters and whatnot. Ultimately, I got a, a text saying, Aaron, I have a perfect job for you. <laughs> I have a perfect job for you. Uh, it's in sales. And at, at first, I was like, I don't think I want to do sales. Uh, but I kept my heart open. Um, excuse me. And ended up missing the opportunity at first. <laughs> Because I was supposed to submit documents and whatnot, a lot of things that I didn't have time and energy to do at that time. Uh, and then about a month later, I got a text from that same recruiter saying, "Hey, this opportunity is still on the table. You know, the person there's they offered the job to someone who had no sales experience for this much, and they turned it down. I think you have a good shot." And I was like, "That's more than I make now. I would like to try." <laughs> and I had a year of sales experience pretty much at my former job. So I sent in the documentation and within like a day, yeah, I sent it on mm -hmm. Friday morning and then the following Monday, like early in the morning, I got a text saying they'd like an interview. So I scheduled the interview for Thursday, I think. And then, was it, was it that? No, I, yeah, I scheduled the interview for, other, I think it was that Thursday. It was the Thursday, The same yeah. Thursday. And then that afternoon, Chelsea went to labor. <laughs> Is that day? Yeah, I, th I think it was that day. It was either that day or the next week. I can't remember exa exactly. Oh, it might have been the next week. Oh, it was week. the next week. Yeah, okay, so a, yeah, Monday yeah. I got the, the interview uh, off request, and I set it for the following Thursday because I didn't know when Kyo was coming. And then that next week comes, and on Monday, Chelsea goes into labor in the afternoon. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I left my job at the time. And was like, I gotta go home. My wife's in labor. We're gonna have a baby. And so I went home. And then all that stuff that we, I talked about earlier happened. Um, and then we ended up going to the hospital. We were in the hospital, and she ended up having a C-section. So uh, we were in the hospital until Thursday. Um, wasn't that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I went for the interview the day that we left the hospital. That was that morning. Yeah. Yeah. He was sleeping on the yeah, what, was, was it a sleep, couch it was in something. the hospital. Yeah. I was sleep deprived because <laughs> of all that had happened with my son just being born, trying to figure out how to take care of him and her and myself and trying to prepare for this interview at the same time. And I went for the interview, prepared as best I could. I had to get up like I, I went home to like shower and like change right after pre dawn that Thursday and I had already not gotten a lot of sleep. And I was like hoping I didn't crash on the way. And then I got there. The interview went incredibly well, though. Very well. And there are a few things we've been praying about for a new job for me. One was better pay. Two was good benefits. And three was um, like enough money to get transportation, like mm -hmm. another car. Because um, once, once Chelsea uh, went back to work, uh, we would need two cars so that we could both commute. And come to find, this company provided a company car, which I wasn't aware of when I applied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
they also had the pay was obviously better and the benefits for like health benefits and everything went were effective from the first day of employment yeah baby and i was shocked by all of that because <laughs> i didn't know i didn't know two of those three things mm-hmm. and ultimately what the interview was thursday morning and by thursday afternoon before we even left the hospital they sent me the the uh, offer of employment <laughs> look at god <laughs> so <clears throat> i ended up getting a new job i quit my other job um so that i wouldn't have to worry about um taking leave of a leave of absence to you know for paternity leave in a sense because they didn't have paternity leave um and then i just yeah i took i quit that job and then waited two weeks to start my new job um and even during that time i had family members graciously come forward and say that they'll cover all the money that I would have not made um, or missed by not working, they would just give that to me so that I could focus on being there to support Chelsea and Keo during those two weeks or during that time I wanted to do paternity leave, yeah. which is huge. Let's let's take a minute and just all y'all, <laughs> when you get to the stage and your wife is having a first baby, and subsequent children as well. That that paternity leave is necessary. Non negotiable. You have to because yeah, physically, like psychologically, emo- like everything your wife is going through, having just given birth, like not able to walk easily and needing to be on very strict bed rest you can't lift anything like heavier than your baby and even that like bending over to change their diaper it's just so many things and if you are like oh well you know i have to go to work and you leave your wife you better pray you have some family there that can take care of her because that's such a an important aspect and you know i think for the most part it it should be just common sense but yeah those those moments your wife will remember forever like how well she was supported and cared for because it's just such a sensitive and you know precious time and also you know for the baby being able to bond like kia's literally over here chewing on aaron's fingers (laughs) but yeah that was something that was really important to me was not just like somebody to take care of me but also making sure that you know kia has a very present father who is there and cherishes him and plays with him um And these were things that I prayed about, like, even in advance of the blessing as well, was, you know, I wanted someone who really loves children and would invest in that sense. Like, I didn't just want somebody who makes good money and then (laughs) is not around. But, you know, the ideal is, like, the heart and the character is most important because, like from that the finances will work themselves out so that's how that's how it's been for us our journey has been one that is like so valuable and who was it past this guy oh, i think he said it in his monday podcast um he referenced a quote that was oh what is it fast fast growth or success creates ego and slow growth or success creates character Mm. and that really resonated with me just thinking about all the things that we've been working towards and the efforts that we've put in various aspects of our lives and the things that take time and effort to really create are those that you really like cherish and value all the more because of the effort that you put into it so Mm -hmm. yeah everybody who has been saying you can't wait to meet keo this is your (laughs) virtual introduction over microphone (laughs) yep just don't give him your fingers because he will put them in his mouth yes 
<laughs> All right. Yeah. But uh, I kind of want to follow up on that um, paternity leave thing. Uh. Yeah, so it's, it's of course, important for the wife and for the, the child, but even for you gentlemen out there listening who may or may not at this time be considering whether or not you should take paternity leave, <laughs> I would say take it, of course, to take care of your wife, of course, to bond with your son, but also because you you really do need that time to adjust to what life is like with a child mm. you you yourself it's not like oh i'll just you know take care of him when i before i go to work and then when i get home and then i'll figure out how much to sleep or whatever it's like it's a completely different world it really is it's so different um and so having that time to you yourself just adjust to that and you know take in every moment because it it's it was tough you know there are times when i mean keo wouldn't sleep without <laughs> you know one of us holding him and you can't hold him all the time so like there'd be times at like night where i literally had to hold him and pat him get the gas out and then he would just fall asleep on me and then i wouldn't be able to put him down because he'd wake up so i literally had to let him sleep on my stomach and then i fell asleep in the bed and then sleep as long as he did and then he'd wake up being hungry and then i'd have to give him chelsea and then it would repeat and i kid you not the night before my first day of my new job, <laughs> Keo did not sleep. Dreadful. So I, I also did not sleep. I got like an hour. Did I even get? Did I even? Yeah. No, I didn't. I did. I. I don't. I didn't actually fall asleep to the point that I could say I fell asleep. So with that, I went into my first day of work, and it was rough. Um, and that was after two whole weeks before that, two and a half weeks or so. Mm. out of the hospital of like getting used to taking care of Keo and Chelsea you know postpartum and so yeah I I would say it's it's necessary for everyone I, I would argue it's necessary for everyone. yeah if you can manage it absolutely if you can't please pray and find a way to still be able to make it happen because it it, it means a lot it, it and it does have a big impact. Yeah, all good things. Um, did you have anything else that you really wanted to? It was just specifically. I really just wanted to share like that there was so much that was going on prior to Keo being born and like at the time he was born. But in the midst of all that, because I was still looking for a job and doing the work that I needed to do, and we were praying about it, the Holy Trinity gave that blessing at that hardest time. <laughs> Yep. And then we were able to reap the benefit, the fruits of it. And it's so great because if I had, I told you that the insurance started from day one, right? Uh, technically, Keo was already, wait, Keo, uh, yeah, that didn't really pertain to that. But um, insurance started from day one, which was huge because that gave me, I mean, I didn't know it at the time thing, but I figured it would start quickly. But that took care of all of the, pediatrician visits that Keo had to do and everything else so there was no there was no gap in any of the medical coverage that we had mm -hmm. at any point so everything that we needed to do for Keo like his birth was covered in the hospital because I stayed at my other job as long as I did and once that was done God switched me over to this new job which had everything after that covered too and so like, that was huge because, I mean, it would have been, I'll just say the number, it would have been, like, upwards of $80,000. <laughs> yeah. That was dropped significantly because we still had insurance. And all this, it was, yeah, it's crazy. It yeah, crazy. God is precise in his blessings. So, you know, it's not that everything was comfortable, like we heard in, you know, this week's message. But... We overcame like various waves over the course of pregnancy and entering into parenthood. Um, but at each time, God really provided exactly what was necessary uh, at exactly the right moment. So we really only have tremendous thanksgiving for that. Um, and yeah, I really would like to hear from our audience members um i saw we had something like 
something like 100 views on our last episode. Wow. Um, so, you know, for everybody who's listening, if you would take a minute. I know a lot of people listen to these podcasts in the car like I do. Um, but if you would, when you get a chance, just leave a comment with number one, any feedback that you have for us. Um, we're still refining and improving. Um, so always appreciate feedback, anything that you were able to gain from this, but also, uh, we really want this to be something that is meaningful for you, not just talking about things that we like. So, you know, let us know if there's something, any questions that you have about, um, our stories or our opinions, um, anything that we can share with you guys. Uh, we just want to kind of spend these first couple episodes, uh, giving you kind of the, the background of, you know, bringing Keo into the world and the joys of being new parents, but we want to make sure that this is something that, you know, everyone can enjoy together as well. So if you're still listening, thank you so much for sticking with us until the end, despite the interruptions and my continuous brain, brain blanks. Um, I had one yeah. too. Kia, oh yeah. Yeah. And Kia's lovely contributions. So yeah. I hope you all enjoy his chirrups of excitement and we will talk to you guys again soon.